What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be talking about what you should do when your Shopify store is not converting, meaning you just launched it, you're getting like a decent amount of traffic, but no one's buying anything. So this is a really common problem and um, hopefully this video helps you out if you're having it. So let's go ahead and hop right into the value. <laughs> All right, so there's a ton of reasons that your Shopify store could not be converting. And I'm basically just gonna walk you through like all of those and um, you know, you can see which one may apply to you um, or maybe it's multiple things. So let's just go ahead and hop right into it. So um, one of the big reasons that people don't buy, especially from a random website they saw on Instagram or Facebook is because your store isn't trustworthy. So People need to trust you if they're gonna put their credit card info in. And um, there's a couple things that go into that. So obviously having a really good logo, um, you know, having a logo in general just helps. Um, and then having safe checkout buttons, um, literally just go on Google Images, you know, copy and paste one and put it at the bottom of your description. That really makes a difference. Um, a consistent color scheme, this kind of makes you look more like a brand. Um, so, you know, have your add to cart button and like all the colors on your website, like the same color as your logo. Um, and that's another way that you can get people to trust you. And then a really big one is having like typos or grammatical errors or anything in your description and your ad copy, stuff like that. Even if it's just like, you know, not putting like a period where one should be or not capitalizing a letter, you know, just stuff like that. Um, people are going to pick up on it and they're going to realize that this is some, you know, like, 15 year old kid in his bedroom and not like an actual company <clears throat> maybe they won't realize that like you know specifically uh but they're gonna realize that you're not someone that they trust um another really big thing is not having like spammy or excessive pop-ups so when i go on someone's website and it immediately pops up asking for my email that pisses me off okay don't do it you know no company in the world that makes a ton of money does that on their websites and you should not either Another thing is having a custom domain name. Um, I didn't have a custom domain name on my first store. I was too cheap. I didn't want to pay the like $8 or whatever it was. And um, for that reason, you know, I spent dozens, hundreds of dollars on the advertisements and um, you know, no one ever bought from me really. So I don't know if it was because I didn't have a domain name or the product sucked or whatever. But anyway, get a domain name. It's not that expensive. Um, and then the last thing is adding looks reviews to the product. Now, this is not something that I do right off the bat when I'm launching a product just because um, it's kind of time consuming because looks reviews means picture reviews, which essentially means you got to go on Amazon or AliExpress or something and get pictures and then, you know, write up or copy, um, you know, the descriptions and stuff like that, which can take like a lot of time. Um, so I only add looks reviews if the product has potential and then if the product doesn't have potential um, What you can do is just import reviews from Aliexpress. Uh, you can either do this with looks or with um, Ali reviews um, And it's probably a lot easier with Ali reviews However, I don't personally use this just because um, it looks really freaking weird <laughs> like if you've ever seen a website with this um, it'll be like you know, the weirdest and just not like English um, reviews, which, you know, doesn't really make people trust you. All right, so another reason your store cannot be converting is because your offer sucks. Now, your offer is like two parts. Um, one part is like the sale, you know, the thing that you're pitching. And then the next thing is like the product, like the thing that you're pitching along with the sale. Um, so both of those need to be great if you want someone to literally like stop what they're doing and like go grab their credit card and buy from a random website that they've never heard of. So um, you really have to have a significant sale if you want people to buy from you like at least 40% off or you know maybe if you have like a higher ticket product and you could do like you know $50 off or something like that um, that's definitely worth testing. Um, another thing is like you really have to have a good product. I mean really all products can sell um, But at the same time the, like you do kind of need to have somewhat of a product that has like clear benefits um, So like if someone's gonna buy your product then they need to know why they're gonna buy it Obviously and you know, that's you know part of what you should outline in your description and your ad and your ad copy 
but you also need to have a product that does something um, and it's clear what it does. Another thing is implementing scarcity and urgency at multiple stages in your funnel. What this you know, fancy term means is that you need to like tell people, um, you know, you need to encourage people to buy now. So there's multiple ways that you can do this. Um, really the two most popular ways are by saying, A, you have limited stock available or like having a stock countdown timer on your product page, uh, stuff like that. And then the other way is like time. So saying the sale ends in like 24 hours or something like that. And um, do you want to put those both in your like ad and also in your product description uh, or your product page? So, um, you know, you can literally just write something in your description that says the sale ends in X amount of time or like, you know, uh, we have limited stock available or you could do like a countdown timer or a stock countdown. And then obviously you should also say in your ad copy that, you know, the sale ends in 24 hours or whatever offer you're going to be doing. All right, so a third reason that your store is not converting is because your product page sucks. This is normally what it is, honestly. Um, but yeah, you really need to learn how to make a good product page because that's what people are looking at like the majority of the time. Like literally that's what's going to take someone from like someone interested in your product mildly to someone who buys your product. Um, so a really, really big, probably the biggest aspect of your product page is your pictures people are so visual nowadays like someone's looking at your ad they're looking at your ad they're not reading your ad okay so photos are really 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 big um get professional photos even if that means like taking them from google images don't take them from google images and then you need to make sure that your pictures don't have like supplier logos um so when you import um pictures from aliexpress uh, a lot of times they'll just have like the supplier in like the corner or something like that. That's a no, no go. Uh, just take that supplier logo out. And then a lot of times suppliers on AliExpress will like Photoshop their product over like, you know, a really obnoxious background with a bunch of like this weird text. It doesn't really make sense. It's in like broken English and you just never want to have any of that. So either take out the text completely or just like cover it up with your own text or just, you know, don't use that picture at all. Um, but yeah, you really want to make sure that your product photos are good because at the end of the day, that's like really probably the biggest thing on your product page. All right. So the next second biggest thing, I guess, on your product page is your description. So this is really, really, really big. And um, a lot of the times I will see people literally just, you know, import a product from Oberlo and then import it to their Shopify store and then call it a day. And that is not okay. Um, you really have to customize your product descriptions and sell your customer on something instead of just like, you know, having these extremely weird, like, you know, gender women, you know, brand fashion just like if you've ever seen the overload descriptions you would know what i'm talking about but they freaking suck okay so just eliminate all those learn how to write good product descriptions i have a video on it i'll put it above my head somewhere i guess if i can figure out how to do that and um yeah just write good product descriptions but uh don't write like super super long product descriptions because literally no one wants to read that they just want to buy your product so you know, tell them why they need to buy your product and just end it, okay? Don't overcomplicate it, don't overthink it, and don't write too much, but don't write too little. And then the last thing and another thing that can like get really weird if you're importing from AliExpress is that your variants can, you know, get messed up. Um, so just make sure that you don't have something that says like a ships from and then it has China and stuff like that. Um, that's a no go. You can literally just go delete that variant. And then your variants can also get messed up. Um, like sometimes a supplier puts like really weird things. They'll put like color and then it'll actually be size and stuff like that. Um, you know what I'm talking about if your product is like that, but you know, just look at your variants and make sure that the variant label um, matches what the variant name is. All right, so another reason why your website isn't converting is because your website sucks. Big surprise, right? Um, but 
the funny thing is it's usually not this. Um, it's usually like one of the things that we've talked about before, but um, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a really good website. So uh, having a really good, simple, clean theme is key. You don't want to overcomplicate it. Just simplify, okay? Simplifying is how you scale in the world. But anyway, um, I use Debut. There's a bunch of other really good themes out there. Honestly, like all the free ones convert. Um, but yeah, so Debut is just like, if you haven't picked a theme yet, just go with Debut. It's super basic and it's really all that you need to start out with. And then um, you also wanna have a clear contact us, refunds, frequently asked questions page, um, which basically means on your footer, if people scroll down, they want to be able to see that they can you know, look at your refund policy and there's your email and there's also frequently asked questions with your shipping times and you know, just stuff like that. And then while we're on the subject of pages, you also need a privacy policy just for like legality reasons. All right, so the next reason that your uh, Shopify store isn't converting is because your traffic sucks. Now traffic is obviously just the people that go to your website and if they suck, then they're not gonna buy anything. So I just wanna get this out of the way. If you have less than 250 visitors, then you can't say that your store isn't converting because it could really just be that you're getting unlucky. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt to look at these things and make sure that they're good. Uh, but at the same time, like, you know, it's kind of a coin toss whether someone's gonna buy or not. Um, so really you should get like over 250 for sure before you start judging if your Shopify store is not converting so anyway getting back to traffic um you need to look at the top five countries where your traffic is located to do this you basically just have to click analytics on the like left side of your shopify dashboard and you know just scroll down a little bit and it'll show you those top five countries now you're looking for english speaking countries like the united states the united kingdom australia new zealand and canada those are really the what's called the big five and um, that's who you should be targeting if you're using Facebook ads. And if you're using Instagram influencers, then you should make their, then you should make sure that the influencer has a following that's mainly from those five countries. Um, not saying that people from other countries don't buy from you, but especially if you're driving traffic from countries like India or Pakistan and stuff like that, you know, 99.99% of those people aren't going to end up buying from you. And then um, the last thing is thinking about your target market. Like for me, I tested a product earlier. It had a good product page. Um, you know, everything was good, okay? Cause I know how to, you know, build my stuff obviously. Um, but my target market, like the people that I have found on Facebook that were converting the most, it was people ages 13 to 18. Um, which isn't really ideal because even though they were converting the most, they weren't converting much at all. Um, and I think that that's really important to consider. Like I killed that product because I realized like kids don't have much purchasing power. If a 13 year old wants something that he's gonna go ask his mom for it. And this was like a $40 product too, you know, like kids don't have $40 to go blow on a stupid product from a website they've never heard of. Um, so it's really important to think about your target market and then, you know, if you're in a similar situation to me, um, then maybe your product isn't right or maybe you should find another audience that you could sell your product to. Maybe you have to market it in a different way, but um, you know, it's definitely worth it if it's gonna increase your conversion rate. All right, so the last things that you should know about your store not converting is, um, you know, like I said, there's a ton of reasons and we just went over most of them, but it definitely does not hurt to get a second opinion on your Shopify store. So um, one way you can do this is just by asking for store reviews. Uh, there's like 100,000 Facebook groups out there for e-com. Uh, one of them is in the description of this video actually. So just go ask for store reviews on Facebook groups or you can ask like your friends and family to give their honest opinion. Uh, they're probably gonna tell you it's great, but you know, tell them to be harsh with you because at the end of the day, that's what's gonna help you. Um, another way that I always do before I launch a store every single time is putting myself in my customer's shoes and I go through my entire like funnel. So I'll click on my ad or like if I can't click on my ad, then I'll just go to that product page 
and then I'll add it to my cart. You know, I'll, well, first I'll like, I'll be like, okay, so I'm a customer. So I look at the photos and then I look at the description and then I look at the reviews and I'm like, okay, this is cool. So I add it to my cart and I put in a bunch of fake information and I just go through that checkout process, you know, like shipping and all that. And then um, the only thing that I don't do is just click complete order. And basically that just allows me to see and like, you know, a good portion of the time there's something wrong with my checkout or my product page or something like that that I see when I put myself in my customer's shoes. Another way that you can increase your conversion rate is by accepting PayPal. Um, and then if you want to, you can accept Amazon Pay, but it's not gonna make a big difference. Um, but PayPal definitely is. And then personally, I don't do dynamic checkout buttons. Um, basically, that's just like the little button on your product page that allows people to you know, pay now with Apple Pay or PayPal or whatever you wanna do. Um, but I just have an add to cart or a buy now button there. And then um, definitely make sure you set your shipping rates. Um, by default, Shopify is going to have like calculated shipping rates, which basically means people could be paying upwards of like, you know, $15 or more for shipping. Um, so you definitely want to change those. And obviously you should see that if you do this step. Um, but I felt like I needed to add it because I forgot to do this on a store I launched the other day. Uh, but it's cool. Um, so basically, I just do free shipping. I recommend you do the same. Uh, but you can just change that under settings and then shipping. And then um, I do need to put this too, even though you should definitely see it if you put yourself in your customer's shoes. Uh, but make sure your website is not password protected. So by default, Shopify is going to put like a password page. So if you go to your website, you have to like, you know, type in a password, obviously, to access it. And then once you upgrade to the Shopify basic plan, then you can disable this. Um, but it's not going to disable like as soon as you update like or upgrade, you have to actually go into your settings and disable it. Um, so definitely make sure you do that or literally no one's going to be able to buy from you and you're just going to waste a whole bunch of money. And then I'm just going to put these um, stores right here. I'll also drop them in the comments if you want to check them out. Um, but those are just three really good store examples. Um, they're one product stores, so you don't necessarily need to do that. Uh, but they're really, really good. So that should show you what a converting Shopify store looks like. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you were able to get a lot of value out of it. And hopefully you were able to find the reason why people aren't buying from you. So um, just shoot me a DM on Instagram if you want me to like look at your store and like see if I can tell uh, the reason why it's not converting if you were able to find out from this video. I really hope you guys have an awesome day and don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button on your way out. I'll see you in the next one.